Welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. And before I get started, I'm going to take a second to remind you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that's the only way you will know for sure when I upload new videos. I must say I'm noticing delays in delivery of these uh, packages from China. It started with orders placed mid-January and I'm probably going to see some packages get lost and never be delivered. So I recommend you keep an eye on your orders and request a refund when the protection time expires. I'm going to start with an item that you've seen uh, very often on my channel, uh, cassettes for my label printer. I basically needed a uh, new roll of black on white tape, but while I was there shopping, I figured I'd add some uh, different colors as well. So uh, I got this uh, black on green, uh, black on yellow and blue on white. And I'm going to keep uh, labeling mailbag items and components I get with black on white. But for those jobs that need the... Uh, higher visibility. I'm gonna use something like this uh, black on yellow. I think these come from the same manufacturer uh, which is named KZE but it's not like they're trying to promote their brand or anything like that. You hardly see any uh, mention of that on the package. If you've tried these you probably noticed it's a bit harder to peel off the sticky side on the back when compared to the original brother tapes but hey, it's really cheap and I can live with that. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. I don't know if you enjoy going fishing, I don't enjoy this sport particularly, but I have a good friend who does and when I saw this uh, luminous fishing float, I thought I'd uh, order one for him to check it out. I think the uh, batteries they offer for this uh, float are quite interesting, but more on these in a few seconds. Let's take a look at the float first. Well, it's rather long and I think it has uh, one LED inside which turns on when the float is uh, placed into water. I think the description showed it has like a couple of uh, contacts somewhere on the body of the float and it uses those to sense when it's placed into water. This could be helpful if you're fishing in the evening uh, or at night, although I'm not sure why you would enjoy fishing at night. Like I said, I'm not a fan of the sport. And these are the uh, batteries that should be used with this float. They are called uh, CR425 batteries. I believe these are lithium manganese dioxide and they have been developed especially for this industry. The nominal capacity on these is 25 milliamp hours and the nominal discharge current is 3 milliamps, which is just about what you'd need to shine an LED. Positive is on the case of this, while negative is on that uh, pin sticking out the top. They charge through this uh, tiny USB charger and I was thinking if maybe we could use these batteries for something else. The disadvantage of this type of cell is that they have a very short uh, shelf life. A particular manufacturer I found online recommends using them within 6 months of the uh, manufacturing date. I'm not even sure how old these ones are but I've measured them and these three are at 4 volts while this one is at 2.7 volts. So this one is kind of uh, deeply discharged. If you have any ideas where uh, of projects where these uh, could be used let me know in the comments. I have no idea so far but I'm pretty sure these uh, should be useful in some projects. And this is how it looks on the fishing float. It's not very bright. You definitely need to use these in the dark to be able to see them. It's like a uh, fiber channel in here with some side glow uh, properties. You get some of the light uh, going out the end and some of the light shining through the uh, side of this uh, channel. As always, you'll find the links to these in the description below the video. Ever since I took one of my watches to a watch shop for a battery replacement and they've scratched the watch, I've started servicing them myself. I mean simple stuff like battery replacement or band adjustment, that kind of stuff. And I've been accumulating tools over the years and I was liking this kind of tool that is used to push the pins holding the links on a metal bracelet. I ordered this one from AliExpress as usual with these uh, cheap tools. It feels kind of low quality but 
I'm sure it's going to do the job for me. I'm only going to be using this maybe once or twice a year. And they've also included uh, three of the uh, replacement pins. So those are probably the weak point on this tool. Maybe they wear out or bent out of shape during usage. Now I'm hoping I have everything needed for a battery replacement and bracelet adjustment. But you never know, there is always that one tool you find out you are missing uh, someday when you're working on something new. Next I have some products from Base US. I needed a slim two port uh, charger. Nothing special on the specs, I just needed a slim model. And this one is rated for 2.1 amps which is shared between these two ports, but that's fine because I'm only going to use this to charge low current stuff like smartwatches, Bluetooth headphones, the stuff that usually needs a maximum of 0.5 amps. You know, I'm a fan of these uh, uh, brand and I mentioned this before, they are not the actual manufacturer, they just rebrand stuff made by some factories in China, but the end results are uh, good quality products. They of course have some funny stuff going on their marketing pictures. Uh, take this for example, we have a brushless motor featured inside this unit and the floating USB ports because you know this is a cheap charger and they can't afford a uh, proper graphic designer. But honestly I don't mind that because I know there are products uh, uh, which are made with this and quality and that's enough for me. And next I have this uh, USB type C cable which I plan to use to charge my laptop from a power bank sitting in close proximity so that's why I wanted this uh, cable to be short. It's just one meter long, I could have uh, went for half a meter as well and it's rated for power delivery 2.0 60 watts which is what my power bank can output and what my laptop needs for charging. Both my laptop and my power bank are matte black, so this red cable complements this setup nicely, but if you don't like this, they also have it on black and uh, different lengths as well. If you're interested in this, check out the description below the video for some links. This caught my attention while uh, browsing on AliExpress. Clean room wipers. They come from a company called uh, Relife and I think they also make a bunch of soldering chemicals like flux or solder wire and this box should have uh, 50 pieces of uh, 8 by 8 centimeters cleaning wipes. The type that are lint free. They are dry packed inside so you'll have to add in your own cleaning solution like IPA but uh, that's exactly what I want. Since these were fairly inexpensive, I was thinking I could use these on the bench to clean flux from uh, PCBs after soldering. I don't expect these to be exactly clean room grade wipes, but I don't need them to be that way because I'll only be cleaning test gear and PCBs with them. So let's give them a try. So this is how one of these uh, looks up close. These are definitely lint free and uh, it's this kind of really soft material like I wouldn't worry uh, about using this even on the finest surfaces this will do fine so I think it's a pretty good buy I think I'll get another uh, couple of uh, sets of these uh, cleaning wipes because they will do the job just nice for uh, cleaning PCB and other stuff on my bench my next item is a PWM DC motor speed controller module and I needed something like this uh, recently in an experiment, in a project. So to give you a general idea, a friend of mine is building an electrically actuated door to a basement. So the door would be, will be sitting flat on the floor inside the garage. He wanted the system to prevent the door from being accidentally opened while there was a car parked inside uh, the garage over the door so I thought we would use some overcurrent protection because adding another type of sensor to detect the presence or proximity of an object seemed like something that would depend on a lot of variables but if the motor sensed a higher current it would automatically stop uh, before causing any damage. Unfortunately, I don't think this motor controller is capable of reversing the polarity uh, because we need to run the actuators both ways by, by reversing polarity on their DC motors. Uh, this does not have uh, uh, reversing capability, uh, but it does have the overcurrent protection. So I'm going to keep this. It could provide it could uh, provide useful for other projects. The ratings on this are 10 to 40 volts up to 10 amps. 21 kilohertz uh, PWM frequency and it looks like that chip uh, was reworked 
I see some flux uh, residue around that chip and it was uh, soldered uh, quite misaligned with the pans so I'm gonna have to fix that uh, before using this board. Now if you're curious we ended up finding a different solution for, for that uh, project. We used one of those uh, uh, protection uh, relay slash fuses industrial automation uh, stuff uh, for the motor uh, and we placed that protection over current fuse uh, before the switch mode power supply uh, which was powering the DC motors. This is a USB 3.0 HDMI capture card which I plan to use with the microscope camera to capture video on my computer. If you've seen Vollog 282 you know I got the new trinocular microscope which has an HDMI camera but the one I received had some brightness issues. I'm still waiting on Banggood to fix that problems but they've said the supplier of the microscope is slow to respond on the issue because of the current situation with the quarantine in China. So after I receive the replacement camera I'm going to be able to use this capture card uh, to capture images from the microscope. You have an HDMI input and an HDMI output port and on the other side you have the uh, USB Type-C port which is used to connect to the computer uh, via the uh, supplied cable and an audio output uh, I guess that can be used if you'd also like to capture audio on, your, on the computer. This uh, particular model is capable of capturing 1080p at 60 Hz that's all I need and I've checked it had some uh, good reviews on AliExpress and it wasn't too expensive either. I'll provide more info about this when I get the new microscope camera. Until then you can check out the link I've placed below the video. Also related to the microscope camera, I got this uh, lens adapter for the uh, camera port because by default the microscope ships with a, a passive adapter which is just an empty tube. Uh, that has some disadvantages as people suggested in the comments in Vollog 282. You get less light focused on the camera and a reduced field of view. To improve that there are these optical adapters or reducing lens and this one is a one third adapter. So Let's give this one a try. I'm not expecting a massive improvement uh, because uh, I still believe the camera has a problem but let's see what we get with this adapter mounted between the microscope port and the uh, camera. Here are a couple of images which I captured using the capture card shown earlier and uh, it went pretty smooth. It was plug and play on Windows 10. Uh, looking at the images we can see there is a small improvement in the brightness level with this adapter but as you can see we still have a problem with the camera the image is very dark and it needs to be replaced the issue is now confirmed. I can see an improvement in the field of view previously I, ha I had about 25 millimeters of working area and now I have about 45 millimeter. It still isn't as good as uh, through the eyepieces but a almost a 100% improvement. It's really good. This is a one third adapter but there, there are also half adapters which could improve the field of view even more. I don't think this is the best adapter you can get uh, or the highest quality one but if you have a good camera I think it will do the job just fine while being fairly inexpensive. Next I have this uh, simple but rather nice headlamp which uh, features both a uh, cob with a nice wide spread of light as well as a uh, Q5 LED with a lens for some distance action. I actually searched for one of these headlamps and I had a bunch of requirements. I wanted the headlamp to be light so I can use it around the house or while working uh, outdoors for long periods of time. I wanted to have both a cob and a, a lens LED uh, because half of the time I will be using the cob LED with a wide angle for uh, close-up work uh, while maybe the other half I might need it to shine light into the distance. I wanted the lamp to be quite cheap and if possible to have a built-in rechargeable battery so I could easily uh, charge it via USB while I'm on the go and you know what I think this time I was uh, lucky because this headlamp has everything I was searching for and the weight is just 85 grams so it feels quite light when I wear it on my head uh, and as far as the light goes I'll overlay some images with the light pattern on a wall so you can get an idea if this is what you're looking for or not.
you can even detach this from the headband and use it somewhere else if you want to there is a magnet on this side so you can stick it to something like while working on your car you can stick this to the metal bonnet of the car and judging by the size i'm guessing it's using an 18650 cell inside you can adjust the uh, brightness in uh, multiple steps uh, but it's not going to uh, remember the uh, setting when you si switch it off uh, there is this uh, charging port which is hiding under this uh, rubber seal it's a micro usb and they claim this has ipx6 water resistance which should mean uh, resistance to rain and splashes for example but let's take it apart and see if it uses any kind of uh, seal around the enclosure uh, which would uh, bring some confidence into that ipx rating I tried taking this apart but I wasn't lucky after removing these two screws I realized I need to remove these end caps to be able to separate the, the two sides uh, but I think the end caps are uh, really glued in here and I'm not able to remove them from the body of the flashlight uh, without um, uh, cracking the, the flashlight so uh, I really like this I don't want to destroy it so I'm not going to continue with the uh, teardown. Uh, I don't see any seals around this uh, this seam or uh, through the end caps. So I think it's just glued together. Uh, it's probably not going to withstand uh, too much water, uh, maybe just a light rain. And the last item in today's mailbag video is also a flashlight, but this one is a handheld unit, which has some really nice specs. It is manufactured by a known flashlight brand, that is uh, Convoy. This has the Luminous SST40 LED chip inside. At the maximum advertised drive current of 5 amps, depending on the bin uh, number of this LED chip, it should output between 1300 and 1700 lumens, which is pretty impressive. And you really need to use a good 18650 cell inside to be able to output that maximum 5 amps. I opted for a temperature of uh, 6500K and I purchased this unit uh, of Banggood because they had this on sale a few months ago. So instead of the regular $28, I paid about $18 for this and it makes it probably the most expensive flashlight I have ever purchased. But given the smaller size, this will get hot if used at the maximum output uh, because it can't possibly dissipate all of that heat through the body of the flashlight. But it does have a thermal protection chip and it constantly monitors the temperature and if it exceeds uh, 55 degrees Celsius, it will throttle down the current to avoid overheating. This has four operating modes so uh, it, it goes uh, uh, through four different intensity if you mid press the tail switch and that's not really what I want from a flashlight ideally I, I want just two working modes like low and high uh, in my experience I've rarely used a higher uh, number of modes on a flashlight now regarding the thermal protection uh, you will not be able to use this on full blast for long periods of time but in my experience I've never used a flashlight on full output for more than a minute at a time so that works fine for me this is a really nice flashlight with uh, nice uh, build quality and a high output power. Uh, I can't possibly show you this on camera, but it's also the brightest flashlight I currently have. It feels brighter than the other XML T6 branded uh, flashlights that I have, but those are probably using just uh, fake LEDs which are driven at a lower current. If you can score one of these for a good price, I can highly recommend it. That was all for today, I hope you found something interesting to order, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, you can support me on Patreon if you like this kind of video, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.